Today I'm discussing global health. In our global health class number five, the lecture series number five, I still want to discuss life expectancy by birth, country by country. So far we've treated 40 countries. Today we treat from number 41 to number 50, another 10 countries. U.S. Virgin Island is the 41st country and it has a population life expectancy of 79.27. Finland is number 42 with life expectancy of 79.11. Number 43 is Tox with 79.05 as their life expectancy. 44 is Wallis and Fortuna with a life expectancy of 78.98. Number 45 is Puerto Rico with a life expectancy of 78.92. Number 46 is European Union with a life expectancy of 78.82. Number 47 is Bosnia with a life expectancy of 78.81. Number 48 is St. Helena with a life expectancy of 78.75. Number 49 is Gibraltar with a life expectancy of 78.68. And then number 50 is Denmark with a life expectancy of 78.63. Today our concentration will be on smoking, on poverty, on sickness, on culture, and then stress. When we compare the countries, Japan tends to be one of the best countries when it comes to life expectancy. Yet in Japan, they smoke a lot. But there is a very stable system in Japan and policies are made to favor the population such that even going to hospital is easier for the citizenry when compared to say somebody in the Cameroon or somebody in Chad or somebody in Ghana or any of the South African countries. When there is a lot of people smoking in a country, it tends to really withhold the, that country's health. So my advice is that is an area individuals and governments should look at when it comes to global health. Because our attempt is to live a good life. And there is no way you live a good life by smoking so much and the doctors are saying that smoking kills. So that is number one. Although in Japan you still have a lot of people smoking, though the smoking population has gone down. Then you have poverty. Poverty is another evil that has to battle with global health. When people are poor, they have no money for hospitals, they do not have insurance. At a time, even in the United States, before the, the uh, Obamacare, about 49 million people were uninsured. And you know what that means. When people are not insured, they have no access to medical and medicine. And that's a problem. That problem hovers so much around poverty. So that is an area we need to really do some battle to ensure that people get out of poverty and that will be done by good distribution of income and wealth in almost all the countries in the world. Then you have sicknesses, chronic diseases, diabetes, obesity, there are so many of them which also hampers global health. These are issues that need to be tackled by policymakers 
to ensure that the population grows without some of these sicknesses. The chronic ones are so dangerous. Then you have the culture of the people. I know in countries in Africa, there are areas people even tend to believe that the herb will help them cure diseases instead of going to the doctors or having insurance. Where you have the culture interfering with global health, then that becomes a problem. Although it is almost everywhere in the world, how people behave towards their health, how they behave towards their tradition and the rest of them, that tends to hamper global health. Then lastly, stress. I once mentioned how difficult it is when there is stress in a family. Take for instance, a child who is suffering from type 1 diabetes in a family. That family will be undergoing a lot of stress because right from giving insulin to the child down to medication, it becomes a problem. And those kind of children are expected to have between 2 to 3 percent higher percentage rate of depression than even adults. Those are problems that could develop from stress. And this stress will really disturb the man in the family, the woman in the family, and even the siblings. Where there is stress, people are likely to die young. This is the message I'm giving so that people can look at some of these dangerous areas and do battle with them so that this world will be a better place to live. I still believe we have enough wealth, we have enough money to be able to live a good life. And global health cannot be improved except some of these principles which I'm talking about are implemented. Thank you.